Yeah, and so I have to get that tomorrow. I was like, I'm, I'm praying I didn't have to need that today. But um, I figured we ain't got but a few more scriptures anyway. We're going to finish on the famine. So I finally, I got that paper or whatever. I can say somebody had fixed my trunk because they used the, the bungee cord to fix it and it wouldn't, you know, jump up and down. Right. But now I had to get that thing out of there, my Bible out of there, and it's like it won't close. I got to go try to see if I can figure out how they did it. Right. But okay, yeah, we still, we're going to try to finish up famine today. We ain't got but a few mm -hmm. more scriptures. The famine. Remember, that's what we was on before when Apostle came. Dunamis, and we was talking about famine, lack. Remember we was on that? And then she came and preached on the power of God. And then I didn't get the paper last week, so I preached on Paul. I know you, I, we, we remember we was Genesis 12 and 10. She was sitting here that night. We was talking about it. Did y'all get y'all notes? <laughs> that's, what we, we, that's where we was at. Remember I said we ain't gonna, we, I think we ended in Joel. Joel was the scripture that we ended at. Joel, J-O-E-L, remember? Joel, yeah. Yeah, I think, Joel. what was the last one? It was Joel 1, and it was like 16 through 20, wasn't it? Yeah. That was our last scripture. Yeah. So now we, we had Amos 4, 6 through 9. That's that's what that's what we was finishing up. Then she came in. Yeah, remember she came in and did the power of God. Oh yeah. See? <laughs> I made sure I got the paper today and then I got it. Yeah. Cause she came in. It was been two weeks ago. I know that. Yeah, she came. She came. In the power of God. And last week I couldn't get the paper, so God gave me about Paul's Paul. Remember? In Hebrew, not what was it? First, Second Corinthians eleven. Cheryl came in. Yeah, Apostle Cheryl. She came in. And talk. Yeah. Yeah. We catching up. We finishing them. Our last one was Joel 1, 16 through 20. So now we're going to go to Amos 4, 6 through 9. Oh, somebody pray us in. Oh, I got to find my glasses. Father God, we just thank you and praise you, God, for blessing us all to come together once again in your mighty name. For you said in your word, we have two or three joined in the name you are there in the midst. Lord, we just thank you now for being in the midst of us as we prepare for our study. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Bell making thank it. Thank you, Jesus. Sound. And we thank you for your word, for your word is truth, life. Your word is you, and you is your word. And Lord, we thank you for your word. And we thank you now, Lord Jesus, for each one that is here today. And we ask your blessings upon those that are not here and we ask that you would touch their mind, give them a mind to want to come down and sit under your word, oh God. Father God, we just ask that you would bless them all in a special way. In the name of Jesus, we ask your blessings upon our lesson tonight. And bless us all. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for me getting here safe. Thank you for being able to get calm my spirit, Lord. I've been through a lot today. <laughs> Feed this word to your people as you give it to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, like I said, we're going to go to Amos 4, verses 6 through 9. We still talk about famine and lack while we got the Holy Ghost. I look a, a hot mess, but you know, like I say, I do not care. I'm just here in the building. <laughs> I'm, I'm going through some stuff. I'm, I'm financially going through some stuff. I'm just, I'm just grateful to be somewhere. I'm tired of going through other people mess I really am mm. and it's like I'm supposed to go through it Amos uh, 4 verses 6 through 9 and I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places yet have ye not returned unto <coughs> me says the Lord 
and also I have withholden the rain from you when there was yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and <coughs> caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your and your fig trees and your olive trees increase. The palmer work to bar them, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Y'all hear what he's saying right there? That means he can take a famine and bless you. He can rain on your land and not rain in somebody else. Just because somebody going through something don't mean you got to go through it. As long as you walking in the obedience of God, God knows how to make the rain rain on the just and he knows how to make it rain on the unjust. But it, right here in this scripture, it tells you he know how to make a piece of rain fall on you, but it don't have to fall on me. So God can cause a famine to get people to do what they're supposed to do. That's how he persuades people is through storms and famine and lack in their life, you know, financial difficulties or whatever. We all can go through a storm, but if you are in the righteousness of God, God can cause you to be blessed, even in a famine, even in a storm. That's why I like that scripture right there. Because God can, can do it. Like I say, you know, if you're going through something, you got to find out what your lesson is in it. Because there are things that, like I say, can happen around you. Right. Like, like example, and I hate to think about it, then people being bombed over there in the other countries. All countries over there is not being bombed, just certain ones. Mm -hmm. So, like, one country being bombed, that's because that country is under attack. But there are countries right along near the side that's not being bombed. So God can, like I say, he can make, like a cloud can rain on you, but I may be over here and don't rain on me. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, or rain over in West Las Vegas, yeah. but it ain't raining over, you know. And sometimes it get over there, but sometimes it don't, it stop before, you know, the cloud is empty by the time it get there. So we don't have to be in people's mess or get, you know, a butt whoop with other people when they go through something. You know, as long as we are walking in the will and the way of God and keeping his commandments, God knows how to protect us. That reminds me of the rapture. You know, when things come, he say we'll be called up and, you know, to see him. That means when, when he come and do what he got to do, God knows how to protect his people. Those are that are really for him and truly serving him. So whatever they do, the tribulation or whatever they do, that's for the people that's not serving him. But God, like I say, he can serve, he can save you as long as, all we got to do is focus on God and do what he say do, and we ain't got to worry about nothing else. Right. Let's go to Amos 8 and 11. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the day is come, say the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Now, he, what he's saying there is he'll send a famine in the land. It ain't going to be about food and water. You mean you're going to eat and you're going to drink. But of hearing his, his, his voice, hearing his word. You know, when, when we don't hear the voice of God or, you know, the prophets ain't speaking the voice of God, do you know that's going to be a, a sad, sad day? When we can't hear God no more, yeah. you know, we, we got to have the word written on our heart. But when God, when you're going through something in your life and you don't hear God speak, we already get a piece of that. Mm -hmm. But there's going to come a time or he'll have something happen or allow something to happen in our life, in our situation, and he won't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Not nothing. Like I was just going through that. He wasn't saying nothing about the situation I'm in. And then I couldn't do nothing because the internet in my area, they keep sending me to, because I finally decided to hook up to the updates mm -hmm. in my area to tell me, because there's an outage of internet in my area. 
So I find, like I say, I've been like all the month to the point I'm gonna call him and tell him I don't feel like paying this month because I haven't really had no internet. Right. So um, they, I've got the updates and every morning at 6.06 exactly, I get this update telling me, so sorry that the network thing issue in your area is taking so long, but we definitely got a team that's working on it, you know, to resolve the issue. Right. Pretty much the whole month or whatever. Mm. They ain't saying nothing. So. I'm sitting there, I couldn't do nothing. I, you know, my TV is ran by internet because, you know, I don't have cable. I just stream or whatever. Couldn't run that big old, I can't run the big old TV off my, the hotspot on my phone. So I had nothing. I could maybe run it a little bit on my computer or whatever. So what I do, I get in the word because I had nothing else to do. Got in there, got on the podcast, on the YouTube channel or whatever. And like I said, doing that and, you know, going through the scriptures that God wanted me to go through, the man fixed the trunk on my car. Whatever, not a mess it up because I didn't want to open it to get that up. My my trunk wasn't bouncing up and down no more for a while. But I'm just saying he wasn't saying nothing but till I went and got in the word and did what he said do to go ahead and go teaching. He said I gave you this platform, so that's what I was doing because I couldn't do nothing else. But that's what I'm saying. When we are in the will of God and doing what God say do, God protects us. You know He'll bless us. You know only what we do for God will last. You know, that's how we get paid for God, is doing what he wants us to do. Let's go on over to Matthew 24 and 7. That's what I said. We may be preparing some lack in our life because God told us to do something and we ain't done it. 24 and 7. I said that right. 24 and 7, not 11. 24 and 7. Matthew 24 and 7. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. We are experiencing that right now. Do we not? Are we not? Yes. Yeah. Famines are rising up, and we've got wars and rumors of wars. Actually, we ain't even got rumors of wars. We having wars now. Mm -hmm. We got rumors of wars coming over here on, on American soil. It's just only a matter of time before they get over here. They are at the border at, at Mexico and United States already. So that's what we're having right now. So that's that's the scripture, one of the scriptures right now that's fulfilling itself. So let's go to um, Luke 12 and 33. Uh-huh, Luke 12 and 33. He's telling them, sell what you got. You know, give it all away. Give mm -hmm. alms. Provide for yourself bags which wax not old. I'm just saying, he, you know, sometimes he asks us to be, you know, that's the tithe. Yeah. You know, whatever we trying to hoard or keep, you know, it ain't going to, remember that narrow gate? We can't take nothing that ain't going to fit through that narrow gate. Right. So sometimes he causes us to be, that's what a fast is. He causes us to, you know, get throw a famine. You know, give it all away. You know, that's honoring him. Mm -hmm. And it said, provide which wax out of a treasure in heaven that faileth not. Mm -hmm. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted. So when we give, you know, what that scripture say, if, if somebody wants your cloak, give it to them mm -hmm. or whatever. When God, when somebody asks you for something and you give it to them, you are storing up treasures in heaven. Because you you know you're not you're not selfish you're not stingy you're not trying to keep that stuff you know you giving to somebody that need or whatever and I ain't, I don't know about the ones that don't need they just won't because you won't I mean that because they won't or whatever but if somebody ain't got no shoes and you give them shoes you storing up treasures in heaven that fails not he say okay our last scripture I tell you wasn't that many because I know. Ooh. I still got done early. <laughs> the last scripture is 21 and 11. Luke 21 and 11. We still in Luke.
They may come to get us to another level. Teach us something. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famine, and pestilences, pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. That is the confirming his word of the scripture we just heard not long ago. That's God. When God get upset and, you know, earthquakes happen, you know, that ain't nobody but the wrath of God. So that's a famine. When they we look at the earthquakes that be over there in California, you know, people dying and buildings falling and all that kind of stuff, it takes a long time to rebuild or whatever when God gets upset. So in that rebuilding, hopefully we pay attention and we correct our actions so we don't rebuild and do it again. Because ain't nobody got control of that but God. So when we see all kind of disasters, I saw somewhere in the news, I don't know if it was tornadoes or what, but there's multiple storms or something going on in the East Coast and people are dying. I can't, I didn't catch the whole um, thing, but something going on in the East Coast. Like tornadoes or something, y'all hear anything about that? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, just constantly. You know, it just re repeatedly. So that's God doing something because, you know, it don't happen just, you know, I, I say it don't happen by circumstance, but nothing's a coincidence that these things are happening. So God is cleaning up down there for some reason, something going on or whatever. He allowing the disasters and the nature or whatever, the wrath or whatever to take place. But um, he's getting our attention on this side and you know what? Las Vegas is like, can't nothing happen to us. It's like, can't nothing, you know, they always talk about the planes going down the middle of the strip. But they always talk about, can't, don't you know we're on a fault line? Mm -hmm. There's something that can happen to us. These dust devils that are going on around here, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Y'all notice that? Mm -hmm. yeah. it, we, it's like we're not invincible. We can be touched too. So that's, what we, that's the end of famine or whatever. With the Holy Ghost, we, when the famine come or the lack in our life come, the first thing we should do is say, okay, Lord, what's my lesson? Show me what I need to know. You know, I need to hear from you. Is it something I did? What's that song? Is it me, me, oh, Lord, standing in need of prayer? <laughs> so make sure that we're not doing anything to cause it. And, and like I say, there's some famines, like the famine I'm in right now, is I wasn't by my own. I didn't do nothing to do but sit there and connect with somebody. That's all I did. And I'm my everything is just you know tossing, turning, or whatever. But we, I still gotta ask. Okay, Lord, what you want me to do? You know, because we ought to make a difference. Remember, like last week, that the week that Apostle Cheryl was here, we was talking about we've got to make a change. We gotta you know make it better. How well when we ride, we make it better, or whatever. So like I said, that is your famine for this week. That we ended that, and I'll see what God wants. God, I know we're gonna be doing dunamis. So um, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. I talked to prophetess, and she was talking about how that event that I'm trying to have, we talk about how people don't, they're hurting, and nobody, and there ain't too many churches that's dealing with the hurt that the people are going through, the church hurt. I'm mean, looking on Facebook and all that too. Who dealing with the hurt that these people are going through? They, we, a lot of them still just preaching the feel good messages, but there are people that's really still hurt from the pandemic because they lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, okay, get ready. Okay, we got therapy and stuff. But I'm talking about the ones that don't, maybe can't afford therapy, maybe ain't got no insurance. They go to church, hurt, get their money, and they go home. We got to start dealing with the hurt that these people are going yeah. through. You know, the stuff that's being swept up under the rug. A lot of people are dying. You know, I heard like two or three families they had four or five people die back to back. And they still trying to believe after all of that. They still trying to believe in God. Right. Because, I mean, close people or whatever. So that's what we started looking at. We're going to start trying to deal with the hurt because, it, you know, everybody's you ain't going to go to therapy. You know, there are some people that got too much pride. They don't want to go to therapy. They say, we, you know, back in the day, we didn't need no therapy. We just sit there. Had a baby and the baby get up picking cotton right along with us. You know how we. <laughs> but anyway, like I say, that's it for today. Somebody pray us out. <laughs>
in the in Bible study tonight. Yes. 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 Take care of her on her way home. Make sure she is free from all her problems and bless bless everything. Yes. Keep us safe. Keep us home. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. I was gonna do Jonah. I was gonna do.